Alright, lesson 5.3, interpreting and sketching graphs. Uh, this is one of my favorite lessons because we got to do a little bit of thinking. And uh, so let's get started here. Construct understanding. So we're going to uh, look at a couple of these together and see what you guys think. So it says, Michael rides up and down a steep hill on his bike. Which graph best represents his ride? Well, let's think about this, right? A lot of times people go wrong because they don't look at what's going on in these axes on these sides. So you notice that we have speed and time on that one. Okay, they're all speed and time for this one. So this would represent Michael rides up and then down a steep hill on his bike. So when he goes up a hill, is his speed going to go up or down? Well. This one right here, let's say I'll label this one as A, B, and C. Graph A, for instance, is saying his speed is going to go down as time progresses, and then it's going to go back up. Okay, so that's um, scenario A. Scenario B says that his time, or sorry, that his um, speed is going to go up, and then it's going to come back down. And C says that it looks like his speed's going to go up, then it's going to plateau for a while, and then it's going to go down. So. When Michael rides up the hill, we'd assume that his speed would go down, and then when he goes down the hill, we'd assume that his speed goes up. So as a result, we would say that this would be the graph that best represents the situation. All right. So on your quizzes and tests for these, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll sometimes just be giving you a, um, a series of these graphs, and you'll just have to match them up with the uh, correct scenario. All right, number two says, draw a graph that is a reasonable representation of each of the following situations. There shouldn't be a little three right there, that's a typo. So, what they want us to do is to see what happens with these scenarios. The first one that we have is the temperature of the water in a pot on the stove. So, we are going to first label our axes. So this is over time, and they want you to figure out how the temperature changes. So, so how I knew that time went down there is remember time is the independent variable and the temperature is dependent on the time, so therefore the temperature goes on the y-axis. So the question reads again, the temperature of the water in a pot on the stove. So let's say that we, we're just approximating, let's, let's say that the water has some temperature right here, and as it begins heating up, it heats up, it heats up, it heats up, it heats up, and then it's going to plateau a little bit, once it reaches the boiling point, it's just going to stay kind of nice and flat like so. Okay. So that's the first one. The height of the the height. Your sorry. <clears throat> the next one, your height over the course of your lifetime. Well, let's label it again. We have time down here this time, and then we have height. So again, the height is dependent on the time. So therefore, you are going to make that your dependent variable. Now. Let's talk about height as it changes as you progress in life. Well, a lot of people like to start this one right down at kind of zero, zero right at that point. But when you think about it, as soon as you are born, assuming that we're not talking from the point of conception, you have a height. All right? So when you're born, we'll put you somewhere around here. You have some little height. And you get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it kind of starts plateauing. And then, as you know, um, you actually start to shrink. I heard a study that said it was something like, I think, uh, half an inch over 10 years, and so you get to something like that. Okay. The next one we have is a uh, smoking one. Your health over your lifetime if you smoke. So we have time right here, and we have health, let's say, over here, where the top part here means we're in good health, and down here means we're in uh, poor health. So um, when you first start smoking, you're going to be relatively healthy. And um, it, it could be different for each person. But what you're going to see is this one's going to be kind of what we'd say as a linear function. It's going to kind of steadily decrease all right, as you, uh, as you keep smoking. All right, let's end up this first page with just dealing with some definitions. And I know we've dealt with independent and dependent again. I just wanted to give you a formal definition of it. The dependent variable is a variable. whose value is determined by the independent variable. The independent variable, of course, is a variable whose value 
is not determined by the value of another variable and whose value determines the value of the dependent variable. Okay, so let's uh, flip to the next page and take a look at uh, a couple more examples here. So example one, describe the journey for each segment of this graph that we have right here. All right, so I'm going to shrink this up so we can kind of see everything all in one page here. So, okay. So it says, describe the journey for each segment of the graph. Notice that we have some different segments. We have from O to A, A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to E. Uh, the situation we have here, it says a day trip from Winnipeg to Winkler, Manitoba. So they've said that the distance between Winnipeg and Winkler is 130 kilometers. So you'll notice that from O to C, um, they've gone 130 kilometers, and then from C to E on the way back, they've gone 130 kilometers. All right? But the amount of time it took them to go from one to the other um, may be somewhat different. That's what we're going to take a look at. So let's talk about what happened from O to A here in that first segment. So it says, the graph goes up to the right. So as time increases, the distance from Winnipeg increases. Because, of course, we were starting at Winnipeg, and we are leaving Winnipeg. What can we say about the journey? Well, we can say in the first hour, the car leaves Winnipeg and travels approximately. See how far did it go? It looks like it went a little bit further than 60, so maybe we'll round it to about uh, 65 kilometers towards Winkler. Okay, so we've dealt from O to A. Now A to B is kind of interesting because if you look, they really didn't travel at all, but some time elapsed. So what do we think happened there? Well. This says the graph is horizontal, so as time increases, the distance, well, it stayed the same. And so we can say that the car stopped for what looks to be, I would say, that would be half an hour right there, and it looks to be half of the half of an hour, so we'd say approximately for 15 minutes. So they might have had to go to the restrooms, might have stopped for a bite to eat, who knows what the scenario was for something like this. Okay. The next one we have is BC. So B to C looks like they got back on the track, um, getting themselves to Winkler. The graph goes up to the right, so as time increases, the distance increases. Of course, this is the distance from Winnipeg I'm talking about, just like I did in O to A up here. So what we say is the car traveled in this leg of the trip, traveled what looks to be, if it went 65 before, then we'll have to say that this one is also 65 kilometers towards Winkler. And we have two more legs here. We have some C to D. The graph is horizontal. So as time increases, the distance stayed the same. And what can we say at this? Well, at C, the car reached Winkler, and then stopped for, let's see how long they were there. They were there at that point, so two to four, so that looks like about two hours would have elapsed. We'll say for two hours. Maybe they were visiting, uh, I don't know, visiting grandma or something.
Now we got D to E. Okay, so this is the part where they went home. Now this one's a little bit different than the way there because it looks like they didn't take a pit stop. They just drove straight from Winkler back to uh, Winnipeg, and it looks like they did that in two hours. So that's what we're going to um, discuss. So the graph goes down to the right. So as time increases, the distance decreases, and the car returns. The car returns to Winnipeg and takes two hours to cover 130 kilometers. Okay. Now this last question here says, uh, our last couple we have here is, what was the total driving time? Well, let's uh, scroll back up to our graph here and take a look. Well, they want just the driving time, right? And so this is where some people can often go wrong is they'll just say, oh, well, it took them zero and it went to six, so that was six hours. Or they may have even just chopped it in half and said it was three hours. We want the driving time. Well, let's look in this leg, the first leg from O to A, they drove for one hour. So we have one hour. Let's keep that in mind. Then it went from Let's see. So this was, we said they stopped for 15 minutes, and then they got there in two hours. So that looks like that part of the leg took um, about 45 minutes. So I'll write that there. And then the last part of the leg we know exactly took two hours. So if we add all that together, we have three hours and 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, what are the independent and dependent variables here? Well is distance dependent on the time or is time dependent on the distance? Well, of course, our independent, whenever you're dealing with time, is time, and the dependent is the distance. Because right, it doesn't matter how far uh, we go, it is always dependent on the time. All right, example two here says Sarah went on a bicycle ride. She accelerated until she reached a speed of 20 kilometers per hour. Then she cycled for 30 minutes at approximately 20 kilometers per hour. She arrived at the bottom of the hill. And then her speed decreased to approximately 5 kilometers per hour for 10 minutes as she cycled up the hill. She stopped at the top of the hill for 10 minutes. All right, so what we have to do here is we are kind of doing the opposite thing now. Now what we're going to do is we are going to provide the sketch rather than providing the uh, explanation for the sketch. So let's get started here. First thing I want to do is I want to go and label uh, my axes. So I'm going to have speed being my dependent variable. It's going to be on this side. It's measured in kilometers per hour. All right. And then down here I'm going to have time. And time in this one I believe is measured in hours, of course. So we're going to leave it like so. Now let's take a look at her speed. Well. The maximum speed that she went, it looks like it was uh, 20 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to make those go up by an appropriate amount. Maybe I'll make them go up here by about, uh, I don't know. Let's make them go up by fours. And I will start here at zero, and I'll go up two units at a time. So we have zero, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, and 28 just to give us some room. All right. Why I chose to go up uh, by that amount was so it kind of spread it up over those axes fairly well. All right. In terms of time, it looks like she was riding for, let's say, I don't know, let's do like approximately an hour here. So I'm going to break it up into 10 minute intervals here. So I have 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40, 50, and 60. And if we determine we need more, we can add more there. All right. So we have a little bit of leeway. So the first part of the leg said that she accelerated until she reached a speed of 20 kilometers an hour. So some people have the person um, starting here right at 20 kilometers an hour, but if she's accelerating, right, she had to start somewhere down here. She had to be stopped. Okay. So if she accelerated to 20 kilometers an hour, I put her somewhere. Maybe it took her a minute or two to get up to this point. All right. So that's the part that I have so far. I'll take my straight edge, and we have that portion of the leg. The next part said she accelerated until she reached a speed of 20 kilometers an hour. Well, we've done that.